Hey, welcome, welcome. Great to have you. Uh, we are following through on the Word of God, living that out. Uh, these are fighting words uh, from 2 Corinthians 5, uh, verse 19. Uh, kind of a continuation of yesterday's. Go back and watch that if you haven't. Um, all about how God has reconciled us with Christ through His body uh, and blood, right, given and shed for us. And so he says in verse 19, he says, that is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. So if you look at Jesus coming down, living that perfect life and dying in our place, that was, what was God doing there? Well, what he was doing was, was reconciling us, reconciling a world that could care less about him, a world that was his enemy, and that would be you and me, like, like buying us back, making that, that relationship right again. And how did he do that? As Christ died on that cross, it, it meant that he would not count our trespasses against us. So not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. That, that's mind-blowing to me. So Jesus did everything. He suffered, he died, he rose, he paid the price for our sins. Right now that we are no longer enemies of God, but we are loved, we are his children, um, even though our sins are as, as, uh, as red as, as scarlet, right? Uh, they're blood red. They are made white as snow because of the blood of Christ. Uh, as far as the east is from the west, our sins have been taken away. We are so forgiven. I mean, we can't even uh, see the full extent of it. And what, and what God does is he entrusts two human beings, but not just any human beings, human beings who have been changed by that body and blood that have been, that have the Holy Spirit living in them. We, we now, all of us, have this ministry of reconciliation. See, that's the one thing that the church has and that Christians have that you're not going to find anywhere else. Like you can find good music other places, good gatherings, good buildings, and maybe even better ones out there in other places outside the church. But you're not going to find this level of forgiveness anywhere. You're not going to find true reconciliation, right? Because 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 this is the way we normally do reconciliation, right? Like like yeah, it's okay, and 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 I'll like you, or maybe even love you, as long as you don't mess with me, as long as you don't you know anger me or 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 betray me or anything else. Real love says, you know what? It doesn't matter what you're going to do, right? God says it doesn't matter what you're going to do. I'm going to still love you and forgive you. Now, if you want to walk away. That's going to break God's heart in a way that we can't even imagine. But He will still love us. He will be faithful even when we are faithless. That, that's what reconciliation is about. There's no conditions. There's not, if you do this at a certain level, then I will do that. See, God loved us when we were still enemies. He died for us. When we were still at odds with Him far, far from him, he came to us. See, that's what reconciliation does. It comes to that situation. That's what God calls us to do. That's our life's work. That's what we're about. And those are the ultimate fighting words, aren't they, for every day, our rally cry? That this is who we are. This is what we're going to be about. That people might know that they are loved by God. That we ourselves would know that every day. All right, let's embrace that. Let's share this with somebody and we'll see you next time for another follow through.